Today I'll be reviewing Boruto chapter 19. So the fate of Konohamaru was finally revealed this chapter. And yeah, he's not dead. He's still alive. And I guess he's kind of well, even though he got overwhelmed by the enemy. So some people like Konohamaru, but some people don't for some reason. I personally liked him since he was a kid following Naruto disguised as a rock. Because he was always funny to me. And he wanted to be Hokage just like Naruto. And I just like that aspect of him. So me personally, I'm happy that he's still alive because I want him to be the 8th Hokage. Anyways, that aside, this chapter, yeah, this chapter was very surprising. I didn't see this coming at all. So the Borto manga is picking up really fast and it's about to go into action heavy stuff. Like, you, you know, when Naruto starts to go into action heavy stuff, it stays with it for a while. So I'm guessing Borto is going to do the same thing. So the chapter starts off with Boruto getting ready to leave and Akita is packing all these things and Boruto is like, um, I won't be able to carry all of this because I won't be able to like be steady on the mission. And then Katsuke comes out with a rehabilitation suit on, but he modified it for combat. I, I, I just wouldn't wear it. I don't think Boruto would ever wear it either because he's looking at it strange too. So he's going to go test it out during his mission. And Akita says thanks to Boruto for taking care of Katsuke and Chamaru. And then Samire points out how she's taken a liking to Boruto. And then she asks Sarda if Boruto is popular amongst women. But Sarda says that he just becomes friends with people quickly. And then Samire asks the real question. And that's if she's interested in him. But Sarda says of course not. And then Samire says that she is interested in him. And winks at her. So she's just implying that she likes him. Which if you watch the anime you would already know. And, but then she says to take care of Boruto on the mission. So I'm not sure if she might actually think that um, Sarada actually likes Boruto but doesn't know. But she just flat out points out points it out to her that she's that she likes him. Sumire so definitely isn't that straightforward in the anime from what we've seen so far. So I'm guessing being with Akita has probably changed her. And I guess it's changed for the better because she's not that because she's not being like shy like she used to be. Or like she's usually is in the anime. Even to the point in the last episode where they're already getting, she still kind of has that shyness about her. So yeah, it seems like she's changed after going through something, I guess. So after they leave, they head straight to the crime scene. And I'm like, they didn't. we didn't even get to see them traveling or going through the forest or anything. They just get straight to the crime scene. You know in the anime, they're just going to be traveling through the forest for half the episode and then get there. And then when they see the puppets, it, the episode's going to end there. We already know how it's about to go down in the anime with studio filler in charge. Anyways, that aside, they they get to the crime scene and they see puppets scattered all over the floor. And Sarada points out that there must be a puppeteer since they're puppets. But then they all just get up and start attacking. So Boruto, Sarada, and Mitsuki have to stop them with their own jutsu. Then Katsuke points out that they're autonomous puppets made with ninja tech and that they're trying to guard the box based on the data he's discovered inside. So they still have, we still don't know what's inside the box at this point. Then Katsuke jumps out in front of them as they're hiding and he guards them and he like sends out some sort of orbs from their hand, from his hands and absorb the jutsu and I'm like there's no way that's the truth seeker orbs because there's no way they'd give a scrub like Katsuke even though he has ninja tech. There is no way that he could pull out Truth Seeker orbs with Ninja Tech. It's just not possible. Just think of what Naruto had to do to get the Truth Seeker orbs. He had to fully unlock the Nine Tails mode to get it. So there's no way he got them just because he had some special Ninja Tech. Unless he had time to absorb a bunch of Naruto's Nine Tails power, there's just no way. Plus, they absorb Jutsu, not uh, like abilities or anything. So I don't think he could create Truth Seeker orbs if he tried. So after the um, puppets keep attacking, they overheat because they're not used to attacking for so long because they usually finish off their opponents by this time. So they, had, so they stop working, and while that happens, Boruto and the others disconnect them. Afterwards, Sarada acts as if they'll be fighting more of them because Ninja Tech was supposed to be like exclusive to the Hidden Leaf and a unique field of study, but they, like these random people have them, and now they're causing them trouble. So it's kind of strange. But then Katsuke remembers what Ibiki said to him. And that's that um, some, someone put him under Genjutsu. And that his ninja tech like research was leaked to them. 
Then Konohamaru's dog shows up and it's Chamaru and it's gonna track him down. And this time we actually see them traveling somewhere. Then they get to Konohamaru, who looks all beat up, and he's with Udon, who's really injured. So it looks like just the two of them took out all those like puppets that we saw before, which is pretty which means they are pretty strong. So Katsuke asks him if about those if the puppets are like scientific ninja weapons. But Katsuke says he doesn't actually want to talk about it. And then Konohamaru says that the skill of the enemy far surpasses ours, I think. And he's not sure. Which means this they could already be stronger than Jonin level, like just the puppets. If they're already that strong, imagine how strong the actual people are. What's even crazier is to think that if they have an army of these puppets that can just act on their own... They'll be able to take out a village if they have, like, if they have, look, if these, I think there were, like, five of them that took out Konohamaru, or stopped Konohamaru and Udon, and kept Boruto, Katsuke, Mitsuki, and Sarada at bay, imagine if they can produce an army of them. Like, if they have enough money, they have a country's worth of money, I believe, right? And they were able to self-produce a blimp, and they have ninja tech, they could start their own, like, revolution or whatever, and be possibly stronger than the Akatsuki were. Uh, the Akatsuki sent out their actual like people to go and get the job done, and they all ended up dead. These guys are sending out puppets to do the job, and the outer members of the Kara, and they're getting the job done, is what is kind of what it looks like. So the Boruto manga is really picking up, and I can't wait to see how this arc is going to end, or if this is just going to be like a, if this is just a subplot to a bigger arc. Really can't wait for that, so... It looks like Konohamaru asks him, well, Kasuke asks Konohamaru if he knew anything about what's inside the container, but Konohamaru says it was already empty when he got there. But he did manage to get, like, some data onto this, like, data unit. I'm guessing they use the scrolls as, like, a flash drive. And then they hear a voice behind them, and it's A.O., and he says, I'd really like to hear about it in full detail. And I'm like, man, this is about to go really bad. And Boruto recognizes him from, like, the last chapter. And Konohamu recognizes him as the right-hand man of the fourth Mizukage and the Byakugan assassin, Ao, who was in Konoha's bingo book. And Boruto and Katsuke are taken back because he's, like, Boruto's thinking the Byakugan assassin, even though he's not from the Hidden Leaf. And obviously Boruto's mom is Hinata, who's in the Hyuga clan. So the fact that he hears that he has Byakugan in his name is obviously going to trigger him somewhat. And Konohamaru says he retired a long time ago and asks him what he's doing in a place like this. But he says that he'll be the one asking the questions here. And then he asks Konohamaru where are the contents from inside of the box. And Konohamaru has no idea what he's talking about and that he's on a mission anyways and he wouldn't tell him anything. And Ao pulls out this giant steel barrel gun. I'm not sure if it's... They, they called it a gun, but it looks more like some sort of blaster. I don't know. Kishimoto said he would never have guns in Naruto because, you know, it'd be a one-shot... You could one-shot anybody, no matter who they are. But he pulls out this giant steel barrel gun and says, I'll silence you forever, and the chapter ends there. So I'm really waiting for next month's chapter. Apparently, it comes out on the 22nd. Really can't wait for that, so... This, this chapter was, I don't know, I, I, I was feeling it was kind of boring. That's why I didn't get this review done already. And because it's the holidays and, I was, and I'm on break and I'm just chilling. But this chapter turned out to be, to be pretty good. And I really can't wait for the next chapter next month. Like this chapter was great. Really can't wait to see what Ao is actually going to do. And how Konohamaru is going to defend himself with the others against him. Anyways, those were my thoughts on this chapter of Boruto. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and bye.